command healing to walk out right now. At the count of seven, do what you couldn't do before. In the name of Jesus, I reverse the power. Walk it against you. In Jesus' mighty name. You notice that a part Listen, of your what you call impossibility is impossibility before the God you serve. That thing that the world has used to laugh at you, it will become a testimony. It is your faith that will see you through your widows. I release the miracles of your need into your hands this morning. Somebody shout, it is mine. Welcome to my segment, Moment of Recovery. I'm so glad to come here with this. My name is Dr. Antonio Co. This broadcast. I know you've been to programs, you've been to meetings. You tried everything, why not try the Lord? That God Almighty is going to intervene, touch you, and turn your life around. I'll be back after this time. Never let you be. How many just feel his love in this place? Throughout my pregnancy, the pain was still there. I said, God, what is this? I said, I have every January, I always tell God, I have covenant with you. I don't have covenant with the devil. I know the devil will not delete me from this. It's only God. After giving birth, I breastfeed my baby. After one year, they said I should come back. I went to hospital. Daughter said, after one year, I should come back. I went back, the thing was still there. I said, God, what is this? I went to General Hospital. After I explained to the doctor, he said, Madam, there is a lump in your breast. I said, how come? He said, I should go for breast scan. Immediately I heard about breast scan. I was scared. I said, God, what is this? I said, I will not die from this. There is a purpose God brought me to this world. We are twin. I will not leave my sister. We, we are one. I continue praying from church to church. I go to night visits a lot. After that, I went to another private hospital. After I get, I explained to doctor again. Doctor said, Madam, you have inflammatory mask. I said, what is that? He said, <laughs> he said, I said, ha. The other one said, you have lung. You, after breast scan. If there is anything like cancer, they are, going to, they are going to cut it off. I said, I reject it. I came with two breasts. And I will live with two breasts. I will hold with two breasts. There is God in me. They are not going to cut my breast away. I said, I went back home. But that day I was going. When they said I should do the breast scan, I saw from there. One spirit said, go. Just go and check. I was scared. I was sweating. Even a car almost knocked me down. I said, God, this is how I'm going to die. I went inside that place. The lady said, eh, it's also a mouth. I said, hey, this is the other expense. I don't have money. Yo. I went back home. I told my husband. My husband said, we should continue praying. I don't know what pushed me here. I don't know. It's just God. Because I'll be going from church to church. I'll be going to places calling God. Because I always, I, one thing I always call on God. I told God, I said, I don't have money, but everything is in your hand. You are the God of healer. You are the God of perfection. I was sitting down the other day when that day called, said, I want to operate inside you, but I don't understand. During the fasting and prayer, I always come here. I bought the anointing oil. I bought the healing rain. <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to say. After, I particularly uh, fasting, I pray, I always pray. Anytime I want to sleep, I say, God, everything is in your hand. You are the God of perfection. Perfect my case. Everything. I want, I want to testify in this church. Because it's not up to, it's a, it's a month today that, that I worship here. But I say, God, just, I want to testify here. When they were talking about testimony this morning, I say, God, let me come back now. This, let me talk. I'm here today. Before we round up the fasting, I just, I'll be using the water, using the anointing oil. I just 
touch my on the knit of my breast. Behold, the thing wasn't there again. It has gone, gone, gone forever. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive today. Everything is gone. Just feel his love in this. Give him a big happy seat. Definitely tonight, some of you will experience some impartation for change. We are change agents. There's something I want to just show you so it will help what will be happening in the next four days. God is putting things in people's lives, people's heads. So I want you to expect and trust God for our usual dimension of his blessing. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Quickly tonight, the theme of this conference is this affliction must end. This affliction must what? Amen. Say louder. Say this affliction. Everything that begins, if it has a beginning, it must have an end. Tonight, we're going to see why afflictions don't have end. But because nothing that begins that is not supposed to have an end. The Bible says, to everything under the sun, there's what? There's a time. And there's what? A season. There are things that must come to an end. There's a time to mourn. And also, there's a time to laugh. Are you following? And so, this week, as we embark on a journey to transformation, but God is taking us there. Can I hear a loud amen to that? We are here to have a program where nothing happened. I repeat again, we are yet to have a program where nothing happened. So for this meeting to hold today, Somebody has been marked for a miracle. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. I read from verse 1 to 4. Then came to the daughters of Zelophad, the sons of Heva, the son of Gilead, the son of Machai, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hoglag, and Mika, and Tiza. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the priests and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness. And it was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Four. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he had no son. Give us, give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. Verse 5. And Moses brought their case or curse before the Lord and heard God's respond. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, the daughters of Zelophad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. This is the prayer we're going to pray. That every decree that denies me of my inheritance, lift up your right hand and say, every decree, every decree. from the pit of hell, from the pit of hell. every decree, every and pronouncement from any coven to disinherit me of my inheritance in 2015 I abort that evil decree I abort that evil decree I abort that evil decree in the name of Jesus I abort that evil decree jam your hands and abort it Pray, I have bought that evil decree. 
I brought it. In Jesus Christ's name. There are decrees in families. There are decrees, demonic decrees, and there are decrees in the realm of the spirit that denies people access to certain inheritance. Sometimes you've seen oppositions from demonic kingdoms. We see that a lot in our deliverance session where you'll see a demon speaking to an individual saying, she will never marry. That's a decree. And the demon has been programmed into that individual to bring to pass that evil decree. And so you see a beautiful lady who has right as a normal human being to be married. Beautiful, well mannered, cultured, yet something repairs men from her. And so we need to understand that there are decrees just like the daughters of Zelophad were not guilty of any crime, so to speak, but there have been decrees that were written laws before they were born. It had been engraved in the tablets of time that daughters must never have an inheritance. But now we find these four daughters of Zelophad, though that decree had been standing, but they came and they stood against it, that this affliction of denial must end. So they stood before Moses and they said, this thing is not right. Until somebody says tonight, this affliction is not right, it will continue. I repeat, afflictions will run down generational lineage until somebody stands up and says, no. And can I say this? Don't ever give up. Because somebody must rise to the occasion to say no. In my time, I will break that button. It will not prosper beyond me. Can I hear loud amen? amen. So all the soldiers who have been fighting, soldiers of the faith have been fighting, fighting against unknown forces, strange wind, strange projections. Keep on fighting. Because your time has come. Amen. I say your time has come. I say your time has come. Amen. Certain decrees will keep on going on. Certain things have been decreed. There are some things that have been decreed in some families that at the point of their breakthrough, they will die. So it's a decree. So these people go through life at the point of their breakthrough. They are denied the inheritance of seeing their hands touch what they have labored for. So we need to recognize tonight that the affliction in the life of of the daughters of Zelophat, so to speak, was a denier to their inheritance. But thank God for the daughters of Zelophat. They stood to that occasion to say no. Somebody lift up your hand and say no. no. One more time, say louder, say no. no. One more time, say it again, say no. no. One more time again, say no. no. May God bring your word to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Any day you wake up is your money. Any day you wake up. I also believe tonight that somebody have woken up to the realization that 2015, I will not be denied of my inheritance. This affliction will not continue, will not prosper. It will die in your time. It will not be passed on to your generations after. In the days of the daughters of Zelophat, the decree was reversed. And I want to prophesy to many of you today that will lift up your hand to shout a loud amen that every decree that be running your family lineage after tonight is hereby aborted yeah. it's not only aborted it is cancelled yeah. in the mighty name of jesus christ yeah. if those four daughters had not risen to that occasion to say no it would have continued this is a family month program in our church. I want to talk to families here this evening. Please stand in agreement to look at certain things in your family to say this thing will not continue. You might be here tonight. The ladies in your family don't get married. Come together as family and say no, like the daughters of Zelophad. The moment you can come to that agreement to say no, will not grow and leave and never be married. No. Have an agreement to say, no, we will not allow this thing. Thank you, Jesus. The day you begin as a family 
to say no that day terminates the life of that force It's the Chronicles of the Act of God. Documentation of God's healings, deliverance and miracles. A publication of the healing ministry of the Apostle of Recovery, Dr. Antoni Oko. At ease, the testifier. A magazine from the Stables of Sovereign Word Church showcasing the acts of the Holy Spirit across the nations of the earth. It will inspire your faith, stimulate your devotion, Give hope and create an expectation in your heart. To order, call 0809-444-5025 or 0802-441-3213 or visit us at Sovereign Word Church, 11 Awari Street, Leopal Hadi Bus Stop, Egbeda. You may also partner with us on our inspirational programs, Day of Recovery, Healing Rain and our glorious services and you will surely reap a bountiful harvest. It's the testifier. You too shall testify. So the daughters of Zelophad came and God told Moses, He said, Go, listen to them. And I want to say tonight, with all that city, that God is saying, what you have said to my ears in the realm of the spirit, angels have been deployed to bring it to pass. Amen. From this hour, angels have been released to frustrate every satanic decree against your future. Amen. If you believe that, shout amen three times. Amen. One, amen. two. Amen. Genesis 25 verse 19 to 20. We find Isaac married and the Bible says at 40 years it took a wife and he discovered that the wife was barren now the two scriptures i've shown you tonight if you observe the daughters of zelophad came before the lord and here we find again that isaac came before who the lord one of the greatest error of our time is for us to ascribe afflictions to natural causes if we have an understanding that the spiritual controls the physical we will begin to deal with most of life's challenges from the spiritual perspective rather than the physical perspective. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6, it said to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded, to ascribe every challenge to natural causes. Well, the reason why I've not been married, you know, this is the election season, PDP and the APC are busy, so all the men are campaigning natural well it's election season so nobody wants to settle down the, all the money has been carried to Abuja that's why business is not doing well to explain away your situation three years ago you look for a natural a, a situation or experience to explain everything and now this is 2015 you say well I believe after the election there will be more money in circulation and they will be able to do good business hmm this is February. You see, the reason why things are a little bit tough, you see, the dollar, the dollar has gone up. Be speaking grammar. Be speaking grammar. From the moment you recognize something and said, I'm dealing with this thing spiritually, you're on your way to your testimony. You're, you're on your way to the end of that issue. There was a woman who had an issue, someone said 12 years. Now, the Bible says she suffered so many things of many physicians. You see, for 12 years, she did not have any understanding about the spirituality of her problem. For 12 solid years, she ascribed what she had as a physical challenge. So we find in, 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 in Mark's Gospel that for, for Mark's Gospel chapter 5, that this woman, 24, had an issue for, for, for 12 years. And the Bible says she suffers so many things from many physicians. Now the word physician means a specialist. There's a difference between a doctor and a physician. 
A, a physician is somebody who specializes in a particular field. So she wasn't dealing with a GP, a general practitioner. She was dealing with a specialist, a physician. Because she believed that what she was suffering was physical. So she went to the best hands because she had money. Because if you study your scripture, the Bible says she had suffered so many things from many physicians. She sold all she had. For somebody to be selling property for 12 years, that person must be rich. Obviously, she must have had more than one land. One building. She must have had several properties. And she kept on selling until after 12 years of pressing, pressing, pressing. So for 12 years, she had done it in her own way. And then after 12 years, she said, all these doctors seem to know what they are doing, but I think I'm the one that don't know what I'm doing. This has a spiritual finger. This must have a spiritual undertone. You see, one thing about time, time will expose any lie. If you're making a mistake, time will tell you this is an error. If you're trying a particular thing with your car, after about one hour, it will suggest to you, time will suggest to you, you've not got into the root of the problem. Am I talking? Time. And I want to talk to some of you here tonight. You have been doing all kinds of stuff for several years. You, got, you graduated, you've gone to get your master's. Now, most of you now, you have all kinds of degree. You have your BSc. You have beard, all kinds of decrees, right? CPC. Now, at the end of the day, you've not been able to secure a job. Does that not suggest that something is fighting you? No, talk to me. Does it not suggest that something is fighting you? So, for 16 years, this woman, she did everything she knew to do. And then after 16 years, she said, no, I have tried everything in the natural. Let me try the spiritual. Because she perceived in her heart that this thing must have a spiritual origin. And you cannot use medication to confront spirit. If it is spiritual, it has to be spirit against spirit. So she said in her heart, if I may, but touch. Touch what? Not just the hem. She saw beyond the hem of the garment. There was something she understood about the garment of Christ. That there was virtue flowing out. So she was after the virtue, not the hem. So she came in contact with the anointing. For the yoke shall be destroyed by reason of the anointing. One of the challenges today we have is that some people, they try a little bit of the anointing. They go back to the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, I don't think it's spiritual. I think I am overemphasizing this spirituality. See, as long as you're on that path, you will never see the end. You will never see the end. The daughters of Zelophah before the Lord. Isaac came before the Lord. The, the, the woman who had an issue for 12 years, she had tried, she came before physicians for 12 years. There was no result. And she decided to face the Lord. And virtue came out. And she was a heed immediately. You imported to the Lord. And say, Lord, I thank you. Say, Lord, I say, Lord, I thank you. Say one more time. Say, Lord, I thank you. I'm seeing open doors. I'm seeing open doors. There's going to be an inflow of finances like never before. Now, do you know why I said so? Listen to me. There's a contract that is coming. What do you do? You're yeah, a government contractor. Give the Lord a big hand. You're a government contractor. A contract is coming that will make a difference. Stand here. Things are not the way it should be, but there's a breakthrough coming. Lift up your hand. Say three times. Say, Lord, I believe. Say, my friend. Say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. One. Lord, I believe. Two. Lord, I believe. Congratulations. 
start it fast, okay? Huh? I saw it just standing before you. I saw a contract sign. They gave me the paper. Congratulations. Mama, stand up. Whatever scatters your children's home will not scatter anyone this year. Are you hearing me? I'm seeing one of your daughters. If we don't pray, that your daughter is going to pack her things and come. Are you listening to me, Mama? Lift your hand. I lose you. The spirit that scatters. Be far. Be far. Be far. Be far. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Come. Thank you for watching our broadcast. I want to reach out to you by inviting you to our services pattern after the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we see in Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 how Jesus went about all the cities and villages, preaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now the true Jesus minister of our generation has to have teaching, preaching and healing. And that's exactly why Sovereign World Church should be your choice of worship and to receive prayers for your faith needs. Now this is how we run. Every Sunday morning, I begin from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Ministering to God's people at the Lagos Arts and Culture Center, 130 of Afemea, Wolo Wolo, Nikeja, by Radio Bus Stop, opposite the Bank. I then proceed to the Egbeda Church, number 11 at Wolf Street, in the Balaji Bus Stop, Egbeda, to catch the last two services, which terminates by 12.30 p.m. So if you can't catch the Kedah service, you can also catch us at the Egbeda Center. Three good services on Sunday, two locations, same preacher. Now on Mondays also, I'm available to counsel at the Egbeda Church from 3 p.m. and by 6.30 p.m. We begin the deliverance and healing service, which terminates by 9 p.m. These meetings are highly prophetic. Cases are called and solutions are offered by the direction of the Spirit. And prayers are offered for the sick and deliverance conductor for the oppressed in the prayer lines. Now, Wednesday, we have our midweek worship at the Egbeda Center where we grow the members by teaching them the undiluted word of God and minister as the Spirit leads. On Thursday, at the Lagos Arts and Culture Center in Kenya, we begin the prayer lines from 5 p.m., praying for the sick and oppressed till 7 p.m., 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., and we comment on a teaching session which terminates by 8.30 p.m. These meetings are highly prophetic and cases are called and deliverances are offered to those who are oppressed. All of our services are part part informative with strong emphasis on God's word. One visit will be more than convinced that Southern World Church is God's choice for you. Now, if Southern World Church is far from your place, you can find a Bible-believing church where the word of God is being taught and be part of that church. The Lord bless you. I repent of my sins and admit I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Save me, dear Jesus, wash away my sins. I confess you from today as my Lord and savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you up from the dead for my justification. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, if you have prayed this prayer from the depth of your heart, the next step is to join a Bible-believing church from today and find out more about this new life. Thank you for watching our broadcast. God bless you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right?